Okay, Mr. Palmer here, video on decomposition and top-down design. I'm going to blaze through this one super fast so I don't get locked into the school building now. All right, so the big questions basically are why decompose? And I'm not talking about breaking down your body when you die, but looking at breaking down problems so we can understand them better. Okay, so how big? If you look at that um, table on the right-hand side, you can see lines of code. And this is an old table. Obviously, we've moved on from the days of Windows Vista. Uh, but you can see that in terms of lines of code, all right, Android, and this was an old version of Android, 12 million lines of code, Microsoft Office 30 million. At the top end, you saw Mac OS 10, 86 million lines of code, Windows Vista, 50 million. Okay, I think Windows um, 7 or something was really bloated. It was a huge number of lines of code. Okay, so you can see obviously uh, there's not one person working on a problem, uh, and there could be a really large amount of co um, code in the code base, right? So top-down design basically is about taking a task, splitting it into subtask, taking a subtask, and splitting that into subtask, and you keep going down. Okay, so eventually you end up with small enough functions that can be easily programmed. So if you think about when we're using uh, Microsoft Windows, okay, or using pretty much any any um, operating system and software application, we got uh, cut, copy, paste, okay, small functions that can be easily programmed and then used in several other different places, okay. So this process of taking tasks, splitting into subtasks, splitting a subtask into subtasks and drilling down slowly is called stepwise refinement, okay, because you're refining the problem uh, in a, on a step-by-step -step basis, okay, you've got hierarchies within your um, uh, application. So what we're talking about basically is you can, uh, uh, you're assembling all those functions together afterwards to combine them to create the main solution for that big problem that we have. All right. So an example of a mobile phone system, you might have your mobile phone, but that can handle voice calls, which can, uh, it might vibrate when you receive a call, it receives voice, it receives data. Okay. That gets then converted into analog, uh, which you can uh, hear through the speaker. Okay. And you can also send voice and that's done by converting, by capturing the voice, conveying it to digital. Okay. Transmitting on the network. You've got text messages, similar kinds of things taking place with text messages. You've got your contacts. Okay. Uh, when you enter contacts, for example, into your phone, you're tapping away on your keyboard, then your, f your phone often vibrates, providing you with some kind of feedback. Okay. Notice that vibrate appears several times on that stepwise refinement diagram. Okay. Because your phone vibrates when you receive voice calls, vibrates when you receive text messages. It might vibrate when you're playing a game. Okay. It might vibrate when you're using a keyboard. So basically we are, we are identifying functions uh, within a particular um, problem which is within another larger problem within so we're, we're, we're going down in levels I'll, I'll just set it backwards going up okay so um, if you imagine uh, my simple problem okay I'm gonna st start a mobile phone company I got two people working for me they've got uh, different specialisms okay and I want to develop a dumb phone this year with an accelerometer in it and next year I'm gonna create some fancy super duper 4G uh, touchscreen model mobile phone okay so why would I be interested in using stepwise refinement or a top-down approach okay uh, in order to um, you know develop my products okay so first of all it's easy to write and test the program because when I got small functions okay they're shorter which means they're easier to write and they're also easy to test and debug all right it's easy to see the relationship between different functions in this top-down design okay so then that prevents interference between different functionality on my phone as each function is written it can then be uh, you can do integration testing to make sure that two different functions work together without interfering with each other it's easy to manage your team members because you can assign multiple people to the same task okay you can also put people on specific tasks so for example on that previous uh, slide that guy Jim might have a specialism in digital to audio, whatever it is, conversion. All right, so I might assign him those um, those functions to program on uh, where we're receiving data and we're converting from digital to analog or analog to digital. All right, um, and then you know, and then when it's to do with interface design, I might assign a different member of staff because they've got different um, specialisms. Okay. Uh, it's also you can identify reusability like I talked about the vibrate function being used across several different things well why am I getting the people working on the text messaging app and on the keyboard and on the thing all to write a vibrate function someone just needs to write one which can then be reused by many different people okay so your code base becomes smaller and you're less likely to have bugs and it also makes it easy to update in the future because you're only updating one part of your code base not the whole thing alright other reasons for using top-down 
is you're breaking the problem down into functional components okay so it's easy for you to see what needs to be done where all right this kind of approach was popularized really in the 1970s okay um you know because this is how there was you know this really kind of hierarchical top-down structured way of of seeing things uh, top-down design doesn't have to be hierarchical you can also think about parallel processes because things don't often just happen one after the other in a sequence often in in modern applications we, we're making use of multiple threads all right so um you can you can use top-down design to to think about that uh, parallel approach you can also instead of thinking about hierarchies and um, processes you can think about data flows okay so you can actually map out where the data is moving around the system where it is being stored and where it is being used okay that will also then help you to identify um, what might be going on within your program all right problems with top-down design though is this assumption that we know the whole solution in the beginning all right and this is linked to the problems with top-down hierarchical approaches like the waterfall solution at the waterfall method which you know you've done your analysis so therefore you've got the requirements therefore you do your design and so on and so forth okay and we know that in the real world okay things don't work like that uh, plans change ideas change okay the market might change uh, you know and so your software needs to adapt in order to be successful uh, event driven programming also is another um, paradigm okay a way of programming and top down design doesn't really work well with event driven programming because you're not really breaking down functions you're breaking you're you're thinking about what actions need to take place when um, a particular event um, is triggered all right so that's basically um, a, a quick super duper fly through of um, top-down design okay so you should be able to think about why do we decompose I'm gonna rewind all the way back why do we um, want to decompose um, our problems okay so we're splitting up into functions that makes it easy to code easy to test e in easy to reuse easy to assign people to specific tasks because they have specialities problems with that though is that we don't always know the, the entire solution in the beginning okay and it doesn't work with certain modern programming paradigms. Thank you very much and look out for the next video.